Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. I'm joined by Mr. Andy Kerr, who is the Director of Product Marketing and Communications at Bowers & Wilkins. Today, we're going to talk about the new sound enclosure system on the Philips OLED Plus 936 and also the Philips OLED Plus 986. How are you, Andy? Thanks a lot for joining us. I'm great, thank you, Vincent. Thanks very much for inviting me to join you. So you have partnered with Philips TV for the past few years, and I believe that this is the fourth generation of products that consists of a partnership between Philips TV and Bowers and & Wilkins. Can you please elaborate on how the partnership has been progressing, especially considering how challenging the situation must be over the past year? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's going great. Thank you very much. I mean, obviously, as you quite rightly said, the last year has not made life any easier for any one of us. But I think um, with each passing year, the, the two brands kind of understand each other better, um, become closer to each other. I think uh, a lot of our perspectives are very closely aligned, always have been, but I think it's getting even more so now. I think the proven success that we all enjoyed last year with Ola Plus 935 in particular, um, and in the preceding year with 934 and 984 have really sort of helped elevate even more and put more focus on the role of premium sound alongside Ola Plus panels, uh, which is great. And obviously, you know, very beneficial from our perspective as well, because it reaches us with a, an entirely new audience of prospective buyers who perhaps aren't familiar with our brand otherwise. I think if you look through the evolution of the models year on year, one thing you'll notice is that I think the initial model, the Ola Plus 903 was almost like a, you know, the first step. It was clearly um, the two of us starting to understand each other better, getting to understand our respective requirements. Um, moving through that to 934 and 984 with their dedicated separate loudspeaker enclosures uh, was a huge step change. It was a massive potential increase in what we could do specifically in terms of engineering opportunity because it gave us um, a dedicated space that we could put our own drive units into without having to be um, so concerned about the implications for all of that sound and all of that resonance going into the picture quality, going into the panel. Because of course, what happens when you put drive units inside a, a TV uh, is naturally they move forwards and backwards, they vibrate and they generate resonance and that goes somewhere. And typically it has issues for what might be uh, optimal picture quality. Of course, there are things you can do to try and avoid that like isolation and decoupling. Um, but all the same, um, the best results we have found come from using our preferred approach, which is the dedicated separate speaker enclosure, which is essentially fully isolated from what happens to the panel itself. And as a result, I think we've we've really made strides, um, culminating in last year's Ola Plus 935, which I think in lots of ways was, was the kind of um, the apex point of our industrial design, our approach of our thinking, um, working with our partners at Philips TV, bringing together all of those thoughts into one model that combined Atmos Elevation, tweeter on top, dedicated speaker enclosure, left center right speakers. Uh, and as you are well aware, um, the end result was you know, a spectacular TV. Yes, definitely. And this brings us conveniently to this year's OLED Plus 936, which is the successor to last year's 935. What sort of configuration have you gone for this time? So 936 is derived from 935 and with good reason, I think once you get to a point where you've got something that works and it's it's proven, um, you know, we're, we're brave enough from an engineering perspective to say you don't necessarily have to change just for the sake of making change. I think uh, in that sense, you can draw some parallels between um, the approach that we've got here and the approach that we have with some of our premium loudspeakers. You know, you only really need to sort of tear up the configuration and start again if there are fundamental issues or fundamental opportunities to do something better. So. 935 was a left center right um, with uh, a dedicated hard center mounted in a tweeter on top um, and then a subwoofer ported to the rear and then two upwards firing atmos drive units 936 is the same because it's it's proven and it works so it's a 3.1.2 you've got um, a left and a right each of which have a 19 millimeter titanium dome tweeter decoupled and floating inside the assembly mounted alongside a forward firing 50 millimeter mid-range cone. There's a hard center, so a center channel dialogue channel, uh, which has a pair of 50 millimeter cones and um, a tweeter on top, a 19 millimeter titanium dome tweeter and a tweeter on top housing. There's a subwoofer, obviously, which is a 100 millimeter by 65 millimeter racetrack style drive unit 
which is rear ported using our bows and wings flow port technology, and then a pair of upwards firing 50 millimeter Atmos drive units, which are different in profile from the drive units that fire forwards in the mid range. So if you're going to Atmos configurations, and technically it's a 3.1.2. Okay, the configuration remains the same. What sort of improvements have you implemented on the OLED Plus 936 then in terms of the Bowers and Wilkins sound? It's a classical loudspeaker engineering, Vincent. It's all the things that you would do um, in a passive loudspeaker to try and improve its performance. So lots of work on optimizing the, the drive units, the transducers. Um, the tweeters all have uh, new surrounds. Um, we've up work, worked on the voice call formers. Um, we've updated uh, the relative positioning of the drive units in the baffle, in the case particularly the mid-range cones, to try and get them slightly further forward in the baffle. Uh, doing that helps to essentially remove the slight effect of being mounted inside a cabinet and essentially get more of the energy that they generate propagating outwards into the room, which is good to hear. Um, worked on the Atmos drive units. Again, as you know from last year, they were a different profile. They were a sort of steeper profile section relative to the quite shallow profile of the, the mid-range cones. And that's been improved still more and optimized still more to get even more output and energy from them upwards, because of course that's all important if you're gonna actually beam the energy and bounce it off the ceiling effectively. The subwoofer has a redone mass on the diaphragm to essentially give it essentially more clean output uh, alongside other work on the motor system. Um, all of that work, I think you'd call the kind of thing that loudspeaker engineers do typically on, on, on passive loudspeakers to really kind of get more from them. Coupled to that is improvements to the flow of the signal going into the product. So um, beginning with the electronic platform, there's HDMI EARC, which obviously is a benefit because you know we can get a cleaner flow of signal in. There's an upgraded Dolby processor, which again gives us more opportunity both in terms of spatial information placement and sort of decoding accuracy and faithfulness. Um, and then what we've done also is work on the passive crossover pathway. So it's got um, upgraded capacitors um, from a brand called Bev B. They are in fact the same as the capacitors that we use in our highly successful 600 series anniversary edition loudspeaker, which is one of the most successful ranges of affordable uh, high quality passive loudspeaker out there on the market. So it, there's a lot of good quality componentry, proven established componentry um, in this product to try and um, essentially improve on detail, improve on resolution, improve on spatial placement and accuracy, coupled to um, that sense of immersion that comes from Atmos and with the subwoofer for work, um, scale and power. Now let's move on to the Philips OLED Plus 986. What sort of improvements or design implementations you have put on this set? Really, really excited about 986. 986 is um, probably the one of the most significant breakthroughs from our perspective in, in TV sound yet yeah, and one of the most significant step changes in our deployment of drive unit technology is the world's first television to use the continuum cone. The continuum cone is our mid-range cone technology that we developed for the 800 series diamond, our flagship range of loudspeakers back in 2015. It replaced the famous yellow um, aramid fiber cone, as we must now call it. Uh, I'm sure you know the material that it actually is, but we can't refer to it like that anymore. Um, it replaced that cone material, uh, which had become you know, in intrinsically associated with Bowers and Wilkins uh, for decades. And we felt and still feel gave us a significant step change in capability. Uh, we've subsequently rolled it out into every other range of passive loudspeakers that we produce alongside a few other products too but this is the very first time we've deployed it inside a TV. So 986 is a substantial left, center, right loudspeaker array with three really quite substantial four inch cones in basically their own dedicated, fully floating loudspeaker. Uh, so there's a decent amount of acoustic volume. Um, each loudspeaker is front ported and each loudspeaker uh, floats, is fully isolated and decoupled. There we go, we go through that again. Um, inside that um, what appears to be single separate um, loudspeaker enclosure. Once you lift the grill off it, it's actually three separate speakers inside, left, center, right, with the middle one having tweeter on top. The big, big, big thing beyond obviously all the refinement elements that we've spoken about, the addition of HDMI, ERC and a few other bits and bobs is the addition of Continuum. Because Continuum is the most transparent cone material that we know how to make. It's the most revealing cone material that we know how to make. The fact that we use it in our 800 series diamond loudspeakers and they are used as the monitor loudspeakers of choice in places such as Abbey Road Studios 
should give you some indication of how significant this is. Um, and again, small, small but relevant bits of information that perhaps your viewership, pardon me, would like very much to know. If you saw Rocket Man or uh, Bohemian Rhapsody or um, 1917, for just some uh, many examples, or Skyfall, um, then the uh, music mixes for those films were mastered at Abbey Road Studios. They were mastered on 800 series diamond loudspeakers. And um, those speakers use the continuum cone, the same cone material that we're now putting inside Ola Plus 986. In terms of the configuration, again, are we still talking about uh, 3.1.2 or is that something different, you know, because you have essentially three, you know, separate loudspeakers on the 986? That's correct. So 986 is, is still um, a virtual Atmos execution. It doesn't have dedicated upwards firing drive units, unlike 936. 936 is, if you like, perhaps more the dedicated home theatre orientated TV set, whereas mm -hmm. Um, 986 is very much an all-rounder, including, of course, music capability uh, as well. Its drive units are larger. Its speaker enclosures, because there are three of them, are individually substantial spaces. They're, they're basically the size of a small loudspeaker. Um, so it's, I think, well-rounded for use with music, well-rounded for use with TV, gaming, music, and so forth. Um, perhaps, yes, the one thing that it doesn't do is the true Atmos upwards firing drive units, but then we have the 936 for that application. Um, what it does have is this game-changing transparency in, in the mid-range and mid-base, because they're mid-base cones, by the way, thanks to that cone material. And that means you will pick up on nuances that you wouldn't otherwise hear. You'll hear resolution that, that other TV sets, um, even the best products that we've produced in the past, simply couldn't reveal. Um, in all the pieces of content that you're listening to, whatever that might be. If I can put you in a slightly difficult spot, you know, between the 936 and 986, you know, as a Bowers person yourself, which one would you prefer, you know, for, for yourself? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's an interesting question. Um, listen, I think the important thing to emphasize is that 986 um, can do everything, clearly. I mean, it, yes, as I said to you, it doesn't have those dedicated Atmos upwards firing drive units, but it does have the, everything else that the, you know, the smaller model has. Also, if you want to have you know, an external subwoofer, there's still the capability to connect one um, of any one of the Bowers and Wilkins portfolio of subwoofers that you can choose to use, or indeed another brand if you so wish, because it's got an LFE output on the subwoofer um, via standard RCA connection. So I think if you have a big room to fill and you like to play loud um, and you really want to create the closest that you're going to get from a theatre style presentation, sound pressure level and all the rest of it, um, whether that's with musical with or with film, then probably 986. Um, I do think, however, that 936 is a remarkable all-rounder um, and obviously very, very good for the elegance of the solution, if you like, because it's also integrated. It's also discreet as well. So I don't know. I don't know. I can't give you a good answer on that one. <laughs> I'm going to say I'd like them both. How's that? Well, that's as politically correct, you know, as you can get, really, Andy. <laughs> I really appreciate you taking your time to speak to us and explain the technologies behind the sound solution on the 936 and 986. Is there anything else you would like to add for our viewers? No, I just think when you get hold of them and when you get the chance to listen to them, um, really important thing to do to try to evaluate yourself whether you think they're any good or not is don't just allow the salesperson or whoever it is that's demonstrating it to you to just play an action film or just play something loud. I think loud, mm -hmm. uh, with due respect to those concerned in, the, in those sorts of demonstrations, is actually quite easy. The, the, the clever bit, the bit that really makes a difference to, the, to your day when you're listening to these products is, is playing something that has nuance, whether that's um, spoken word dialogue in a, you know, in a complex sequence in a, I don't know, Martin Scorsese film, or uh, something that's got you know, music background overlaid over voice or something like that. Because what we focus on as much as scale and power and all those other things are the things that we believe both in TV sound and in loudspeaker sound make the biggest difference to your listening experience, which is resolution and realism. So we're trying to get the human voice to sound like the human voice, to get pianos to sound like pianos, um, placement of instruments within a sound stage or placement of effects in a virtual surround sound environment to feel convincing. And it's that as much as just bang, <laughs> if you want a better expression, that um, I think hopefully defines the, the, the value proposition. As I said to you earlier on, a particular case of 986, but with both models, 
we're really pleased with the step forwards that we made in terms of a realistic listening experience. Because, of course, let's not forget our friends at Philips TV are trying to do that all the time with, with the viewing experience as well. They're trying to get you closer to viewed reality. Uh, we're hoping that we're kind of matching them with what we're offering from a uh, listening reality point of view. Thanks for taking the time to speak to us. And I genuinely can't wait to listen to the 936 and also the 986, especially in terms of the sound solution. I think last year's 935 was comfortably the best sounding TV that I've tested. And I hope one of your sets will succeed it. Well, thank you very much, Vincent. I certainly hope you find that too. Okay. Thanks, Andy. Take care. Take care.